show the results of the exercise. In this last block, I'm going to show you the result of an exercise. Here, you will see how the process works in execution and some configuration points. With the exercise instructions together with my indications here in the video, you should be able to complete the final exercise. Let's go to the application now. And let's start now by going to structure to see the class of process that we are going to use. It's this one, set up meetings to launch the vehicle. Okay, here we can see the diagram. And here we are going to set up meetings. We are going to set up a whole campaign, setting up meetings for the launch of a vehicle. When all the meetings have been organized, a task will be created for the speakers. Each one with the details of the meetings in which they will have to take part in. On the other hand, another task will be created for the organizer. So they have all the information to monitor the process. The speakers has to have to assess the launch of the vehicle on the campaign, okay? And the, organi the organizer had to get all the information. So let's go now to my tasks to start a process. We are going to see all the different button actions and the different functionalities of the different fields. Here we are going to work with a lot of the functionalities we have been learning during the course. So let's add some data. For example, in here, let's add allocation, hire facilities, and an address. And if I click on this first button, delete data, we can see that the data has been deleted. Okay. So this button obviously is set up to delete all the data, but only delays, deletes the data that is editable. Okay. So for example, these ones, we can see that they still here. So if I went to settings, we could see that the action of this button is to cancel the form. That would be the action of the button. Okay, once I start a process, even when I don't add any data, it will be safe in drafts. Okay, so here I don't have any data. So let's do it like that. And we can see that is here. So if we go back, okay, we can add some more data to see the functions and the actions of the other buttons. So let's introduce some data now. So model, make brochure, clients fa facilities, let's look for a client. Okay. And if this time I click on delete IMEM button, we can see that the whole thing has been deleted, okay? Even the draft here, we don't have a draft now, okay? So let's start another process. Okay, so as we can see, this one actually deletes the editable data that we have. This one deletes the whole thing. Now we have this button, for example, it's car and driver web. And this is basically a button that is going to take us to an external website. Okay, in this case, Car and Driver Magazine. This button's action is to link. It simply opens on a specific website when we click on it. Okay, we can add any URL in the configuration. So it is open here when we click on the button. This button sees speakers. Okay, it's going to show us the speakers are going to receive the task. But because I don't have any information here, even if I click now on it, it won't work. Okay, so I'll show you later on when we have some data here. Then we have the exit button and the save button, which are quite obvious. So this one is obviously to leave the form and this one to save it. The send button is the one that start the process here. Okay, so when I click on send, the process will start. We can also see here that we have a chronometer that is counting the seconds. 
Okay, so if we go to the settings, so let's leave here and go to settings. Okay, and we go to the configuration. We can see we can configure it. So it saves all the data in a field that we will choose. Okay, in this case, we chose this field. So later on, if we want any information about the time it took us to complete the form, etc., we could go to this field and we will have the, all the information stored. Okay. Also for the descriptive document we saw before. This is a decimal type of term. Okay. This one. Okay. That I created in the dictionary of terms. So let's save and go back to execution. As we can see, we have had a look at the buttons, actions, all the different actions to the chronometer. And now we're going to have a look at the section one. Which vehicle is it? We can see here that we have a models, model family prefix and a make family one with the particularity that when I add anything here, like for example, this car, okay. This one, the make field, is filled out automatically. Okay, so as soon as I choose one here, the, the make appears here. These two terms are related. Okay, if we have a look at section two, details of the meeting, in this section, we have a group of fields as well called meetings. And this form is a whole division in itself. Okay, this form has three divisions, three different divisions, and the group of fields is one of them. Okay, so if we go to settings, we can see the three different divisions. So let's go here to the form. And as you can see, okay, I have three divisions. One of them is the group of fields, okay, the details of meetings, division is the group of fields. And this way I can actually choose the right size I want the group of fields to have. Okay. Because if I put it here, it just always ends up going to the end of the page. Okay. So this way I can choose the right size. Okay. So let's go back to where we were. And let's add some data to the group of fields. So let's add meeting one, date, speaker, AP2, and let's go to the agenda, subject one, duration of the meeting, two hours, and let's add another one. Subject 11 and four hours. Save and exit. Let's add another meeting. Meeting two. Some data. And I heal this time. And in agenda. Subject two. Five hours. And subject 22, three hours. Save and exit. And a last meeting, meeting three. AP2. And subject three, two hours. Subject 33, four hours. Save and exit. And then we have all the data here.
Now, if I click in See Speakers button, I will see that the task has been sent to these two employees, AP1 and AP2, okay? Now we have seen all the different action buttons in the form, okay? This field as well, the chronometer, and section one and two, okay? So we are gonna see now the section three, indicate the location. In location, we can choose between three options, okay? So if I choose on facilities, I can see that I don't have to add any more data, okay? If instead of on facilities, I choose higher facilities, we can see that another field appears, external location and another button. Well, this is not really a button like these ones, it's a external form element, okay? So if I add, the, if I add here external location, for example, one. this address, okay, and just indicating that we are gonna hold the meetings in a high, in some higher facilities, okay, in this address. To see the location, I just need to click here in see location, okay. And as we can see, it takes us to Google Maps and to the right place. As we saw before, okay, we have an origin field in the parameter parameter, okay, the external address and the destination parameter that Google awaits for, that is Q, okay? And if we click here, it takes us to the location. The third option is clients facilities, okay? And as we can see, as soon as we choose this, we have three fields appearing and another external form element. Client, there is an account prefix, address, a suffix, and city, there is another suffix. We also have this, external form element, okay, and we will see how it works in a minute. So if I go to client and I choose one, for example, target, we will see that these two suffixes get filled out automatically. And if I click in here, show client's location, we can see that it takes us to Google Maps to the right address, okay? We can see the composition, okay? We can see that he has added the address, he has taken the address and the city. So as we could see here, they are in different fields the address and the city, okay? So I kind of have to create another field name complete address, okay? And add a composition. So when I click here, the button kind of gets the information from here and from here. So if we go to settings now, we can see the configuration. So in here, we can see that we have another field behind this external form element. This field, okay, this field is here, okay, it's complete address and we can, we have here Title position, we said no, and thus we don't have a title there, okay? We can also see that we chose the option calculated. As I mentioned before, the calculation is a composition with the address and the city. It has to be in the form, so it works. So as I don't want to see it, I decided to put it behind this other element. Here, we can also see that we have some elements and some fields on top of each other. Although here it looks a bit hectic, it won't be a problem in execution because, you know, they are not all showing at the same time. Depending on what I choose here, some of them will appear and some won't. So it will look okay. Let's go back to execution now. 
so we can see how this section 4 works. This section here. So the first thing we can see here is the signature. As we saw here, we have all the information about the location and the speakers. And we will just need to sign the document, okay? So then we can create an, an automatic document, okay? So let's sign it. And now I can create an agenda, okay? The summary of the launch of the vehicle meetings, okay? The create agenda button has the automatic document action. The action is to create a document with all the data, okay? And based on a base document template that I created previously. So if I click on create, we can see that the text here has changed and now is agenda created, okay? And if I go to agenda, see agenda, the document should be here, okay? And as we can see, it has been signed as well. And here we can see the different document with all the data we had been adding to the form, okay? As always, the document will combine data we just added in the form, okay, with data from the process itself. We have here a meeting agenda from the company target, okay, that we just added in the form in clients facilities, which we added as well, okay, for the landing of the vehicle. We also selected the model, okay, we have each speaker will receive a document and meeting will take place in the client's facility in Valencia in the address Rivera 89. Okay, this is the group of fields. Okay, so this is a recursive paragraph where we have the information of the three different meetings. Okay, meeting one, meeting two, and meeting three. And here at the button, we have the convener, which is Anna Hill, and the signature. Here we can see we have the client's facilities, as we said, and all the information we have been added. Now let's imagine. The meeting is not, not, not going to be held in the client's facility. So let's go and change it. So we're going to select now higher facility. Okay. Now we go to, let's save it and then create agenda. We go to the document now. As we can see, it has changed to higher facilities, okay? And also we have the different address. If we add it here and change it to own facilities, again, it will say own facilities in the document. We have seen how this document gets created, but there is another document created at the same time, one for each speaker. So if we have three different speakers here, well, th three different meetings, but two different speakers. Okay, if I go to here, for example, and I open the document, we can see that it's higher facilities, the model and all the information we had, and also the information of the, about the meeting one. Okay, because it's in this one that David is going to take part in. If we go to this one instead, okay, we can see the information of the meeting too. And if we were to click here, again, we will have the information for the meeting number three. The base document is exactly the same here as this one. The only difference is that when the destination of the base document is a line in the group of fields, it collects only the data of that line. So for example, although we are using the same base document, here it would only collect the information of this line, which is meeting one, okay? In this case, it will only collect the data for the meeting two, and here, obviously, for the meeting three. The base document is the same for the meeting and for the speakers. The base document that is created here with all the meetings is the same as the one created here, as I mentioned before.
we also can see the difference in the destination field. So once the document is created, it will be stored in C agenda. And in here, it will be stored in a column in the group of fields. As we have seen, depending on the option we choose here, we have some different text appearing with different information in the base document. The same would happen in the document created here. Let's leave the option Hire Facilities before going to see the template. So let's go to Structure, Processes, and let's have a look at the base document. Is here. We can see here the text, okay, with meeting agenda for the company, the account, the location, the make and the model, all these things that we are going to add in the form, okay. Each speaker will receive a document with a meeting agenda, okay, this text will always appear. And then we have three conditional regions. Okay, so depending on what we choose, we will see this text, this one or this one. So if we choose own facilities, we will only see this text. If we choose clients facilities, we will see this. And if we choose external facilities, then we will see this. We also have a recursive paragraph that remember is when we want to add a group of fields and the data of the group of fields. We have an affiliated group of fields. This is the signature, okay, and the star message creator, which would be the convener in this case. With this, we will create the base document to use as template, okay? As we have seen it before, it's not a big deal. This one, okay, as we said before, is going to be the same. Okay, now. We can go to settings to see the configuration of this external form element. So if we go to the configuration, we have here that we have two options, okay, two actions. One, it was the change button text, okay, so we have created an agenda and when we click on it, it changes the message and it will change it to agenda created. And the other action is the automatic document that we were creating when we were clicking. Here we have these options we talked before. Document will be created on display. Yes. Converted to PDF. And here we have both base documents that we have created. If in here we select this option, select on execution, we will be able to choose the template we want once we are in execution. Okay, so when we click in here, we will have the list of the base documents, so we could select one. If we have create all, then it will create them all directly. So here is where we add all the base documents we have. And as we mentioned before, the documents created here will be stored here and the documents created here will be stored in this group of fields column. Another option we have in this form is the capture option that as we mentioned previously, okay, is to, is so the system can distinguish if they are interacted with a human or a robot. If we couldn't read this properly, we could always click in here, obviously in execution, and it will change the code. It will add a new one, okay? Let's go back to execution now. And let's suppose I wanna click on send, I wanna finish. If I try to do this, I'll get a warning window, okay? telling me that I need to fill this up. So let's go P and then click again. And this time we can see that is a task has been sent to the speakers with the participation details in the meeting for the new launching. Okay. So now 
the process has been started. So if I click here and proceed, I will see that AP1 has two tasks now. One because she is a speaker and the other one because she's the, she is the organizer. So she will have to monitor all the information of all the different speakers. But before going into the tasks, let's go back to the settings so we can see the configuration of the send button we just saw. So if we go here, we can see the action and the action is start process. Okay, although it says send, it actually starts the process. And we can also see that we had a confirmation division. Okay, that is the one we just saw after pressing, after clicking in this button. So, as we have seen before, this would be an original complement and we will just add the text. Okay. So, let's go back. And as we said before, Anahil has two tasks. Because she is the organizer and also one of the speakers. The other speaker was AP2, David. So he would have got a task like this one because he is a speaker. If we click on the organizer task, okay, here we will be able to see all the different methods in this launch assessment field. Here, okay, the speakers can add comments, okay, so they can assess the launching of the vehicle. And this way, the organizer, in this case Anahil, can see all the information, all the different speakers and the information they are adding. If we go back now to the other task as a speaker, okay, we have setting up and assessing meetings. We will have here the information of the right meeting. In this case, Anahil is participating in meeting two. And obviously, AP2. That is, the other speaker would have got another task like this one. So here we can add positive, so positive feedback and save and exit, save and exit. And if we go back to the organizer now, we can see here we have the information in here okay so if david adds anything here she will obviously will get the information immediately here so if i go to ap2 tasks we will see this task so we can add needs in Improvement and okay. Save and exit, and we're gonna finish it. Remember that he has two because he is taking part in meeting one and three. Save, save and exit. And we have this because we selected a unique task, although he's participating in two meetings. In configuration, we could change this if we wanted to. So let's finish it and let's go back to AP1. So if I go now to reports, we can see all the different speakers and the organizer and when the current flow is so we can see the current flow is in the organizer task and also here because Anna Hill hasn't finished the task. Now we go to panel, we have here all sorts of different fields and information and data. Okay, so external facilities we could see here 
the address, signature, okay, the model. We could we could also see the time, etc. And now we can finish the task and the process is finished. An organizer. Okay, we have here all the information and finish. If we go to general settings now, to the task, okay, we can see that the appoint appointed performer is panel, group of fields, meeting, speaker. Here in the group of field, we can select in notify if we want one task per line where well, you need tasks for all the lines of the performer. Because we have that last option selected, AP2 only receive a unique task, although he had two meetings. Okay, as I mentioned before, we could have one task per line, but we just have configured here, so we only get one task with all the information of the different lines. Okay, so save and exit. And if we go now to the form, to the settings, and to the group of fields, we can see a last option. I don't remember mentioning, and it's this one. Lines to be displayed, we can select all, the performer lines only, or the performer lines if creator. The performer lines only, this option is so the speakers don't receive all the lines, but only their ones. Okay? And this will be all for this course. So now it's your turn to try to do the final exercise. Thank you for listening, and I really hope you enjoy the course.